today I will be talking of the importance of listening to our genes. Of course, I don't mean literally, literally uh, listening to our genes, but rather um, understanding their influence of uh, making everyday decision, since the last time I've checked, genes cannot talk. <laughs> um, I like to warn you from the very beginning that some of the ideas that I'm going to share with you might be kind of controversial, you might disagree with me, but just take it easy, think a little bit, and perhaps when we meet in a year or something, we'll see who is right and who is wrong. <laughs> uh, since we are very diverse in our education background, it doesn't hurt to uh, be on the same page, and I'll spend a minute or so to explain the three basic words that I'm going to use in my talk, namely what is DNA, genome, and genes, DNA and genome is the same thing. They stand for this long molecule, and this why it is taken from the Department of Energy. And this long molecule contains about 3.3 billion uh, letters. This is the entire information needed to make our body. And small segments of this genome, or DNA, are called genes, and they code for proteins. So we have many, many genes, and only one genome, and only one DNA. So we are all different. We are humans, I guess we are humans. I cannot see the back side of the room. <laughs> uh, and we share the same DNA. 99.9% .9 of our DNAs are the same. But the rest, 0.1%, make a difference, which is shown over here, just a small stretch of DNA and the differences are highlighted in yellow. So these are the differences that make us different in terms of our appearance, our susceptibility to diseases, and everything else. Uh, and I bet you that when you heard the word genetics, genome, genes, the first thing that you envision is uh, personalized medicine. And actually, it's, it's happening nowadays in many advanced clinics and uh, institutions. And, uh, the idea is that when you see a doctor, either because you're sick or you simply uh, undergo a regular checkup, your diagnosis will be based not only on clinical syndromes, clinical appearance, but also on your personal DNA. And when you go to the pharmacy to pick up your medication, that medication will be labeled not only with your name, but with signature of your DNA. This will be just for you. This is very nice and we are working very hard to really accomplish this goal, but I have to tell it's not an easy task. And I will try to illustrate that in this slide. Here I show schematically a human body. You can see some organs inside, but on microscopical level, each of us is made of 100,000 billion cells. Each cell itself contains more than 20,000 different proteins. Each protein exists in millions of copies, and they interact with millions of RNA, uh, small molecules, ions, etc., etc. And this is a movie that I asked my uh, student to make for you to illustrate the complexity. This is just a single protein interacting with a very tiny stretch of DNA. To understand the complexity of our body, whatever you're seeing here must be multiplied by 100,000 billions times 2,000 times millions, 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 and you're not allowed to use a calculator. <laughs> it's a huge number. So obviously such a large system cannot self-regulate completely. It will depend on the environment. And by environment, I mean something bigger than just fresh air and clean water. And I will try to explain this thing to you with the following slide. In the middle, I have a group of people. You can appreciate that they are all different. They are different because they have different DNAs. But I bet you, even if you have two identical twins, and let's say one of them eats mostly veggies, another one eats mostly pizza, they will be different, and they will have a different health status. Not to mention if they are exposed to different really environmental conditions, fresh air versus polluted air. What about our lifestyle? I will let you decide by yourself 
which of these two persons will have a better health prognosis. A person who spent most of the time watching TV, drinking beer, perhaps, or people that regularly expose themselves to exercise and outdoor activities. Something that is typically overlooked in public speeches, and even in scientific literature, is the effect of the education, family environment, and uh, the neighborhood, if you wish, on our intellectual development. The same two hypothetical twins, if they attend different schools, or for some reason they're exposed to different families or different social environment, I bet you they will have different intellectual uh, capabilities. And not to mention the last thing, we are having different jobs. Some of us sit most of the time behind a computer, others are having jobs that require a lot of physical strength. That will shape us together with our DNA. So going back to the personalized medicine, I was asking myself, are we aware of what is going on? What is the progress of genetics with respect to the human health? And this is a study that I took the, from Personalized Medicine Coalition a year ago when they asked people, do you know what is personalized medicine? Only 38% knew the term. I bet you if the same survey is made nowadays, the bar will be much higher, and I'm sure in a couple of years it will reach 100%. The very same uh, survey indicate that uh, people that are in favor of uh, personal medicine, they are in favor of genetic testing, and they are also in favor that the insurance company should be paying for that. Of course, it shouldn't be mandatory if it is needed, if it is prescribed by doctor. I'm a strong believer that that should be part of our regular medical care. So, personalized medicine is really one of the main topics of uh, how we can use genetic information to improve our life. But I like to challenge you a little bit, saying there are other things that we can do with uh, genetic information. And I will take several examples to illustrate what do I mean. The first one is a disease called chronic beryllium disease. This is a disease that results into lung disease, cancer, and ultimately death, and there is no treatment for such a disease. People that uh, get sick of that uh, disease, they are exposed to beryllium, and typically they are workers in the following industries, including defense, ceramic factories, aerospace, you name it. One scientist took a look, was look at what is happening there. They figured an amazing thing most of sick people had a particular DNA mutation in only one gene. Just to be on the same page, we have 20,000 different genes. Each gene has 100,000 letters. Only one letter is wrong with these guys, and they have 85% to get sick. Now, I'm asking myself, if I'm uh, seeking a job, and I know that I have this defect, do I have to apply for a job in these industries? I know that if I get employed there, I will get sick almost for sure in a couple of years and I will die. What about if I'm CEO of such a company? Do I like to take the risk to employ somebody that I know almost for sure is going to get sick very soon? I'm going to leave this question for you, and you can think about <laughs> job discrimination, equal opportunity rights, but it is important also to save lives. Second example that I'm going to give you is uh, regarding jobs or activities that require extra physical strength. And I'm mentioning, for example, uh, military special forces, professional wrestlers, movie firms, uh, and it was also documented in the literature that people that are capable to build muscles or people that are very capable of fast reactions, they have specific modification in only one of our genes called myostatin. If I'm army recruiter, do I want to know if my new recruit has these particular capabilities 
so I can place it in the right unit. Perhaps I do. I'm going to leave this question for you as well. I can extend the list of my uh, topics with many other things. These are really quite challengeable. Uh, I'm totally sure that recently we will discover what is the linkage, for example, between our DNA variants and our ability to play on piano, <laughs> or maybe be very excellent uh, athlete. Um, maybe, and everybody knows that uh, if you don't have the talent, no matter what is uh, uh, the uh, uh, training approach you take, you will never be the top piano player. What about the same thing, using genetic information to design a training procedure that is exactly for you? And I can keep talking about diets and other stuff. I like to conclude my talk asking you a simple question. How many of you have your DNA sequenced? And how many of you receive professional interpretation of your DNA variants? Raise your hand. <laughs> Very few. So rest of you, what you're waiting for? <laughs> Go your DNA sequence, receive professional interpretation, and listen to your genes. Thank you. <laughs>